This is the Resilient Advisor Show with Jay Coulter. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Resilient Advisor. Today, I'm speaking with Connor Kitko of YCharts, and we're going to debrief a white paper that he and his team recently put out called Can You Hedge It With an ETF? This is a robust white paper, 68 pages long. They go through six different market scenarios, and they ask the question, could this scenario be hedged with an ETF? Connor, thanks so much for coming on to break this down. Thank you, Jay. I'm really excited to be here and excited to talk about hedging. There's a lot of things in the market right now that I'm sure a lot of advisors and investors definitely want to protect themselves from. So what a more appropriate time to be talking about hedging. And I tell you why this is so appropriate for my audience is we're big believers in the precision tools of ETFs and their ability to get you some precise allocations to what you're trying to accomplish. So look, we're going to walk through four of the six just for time constraints. But to kind of set the stage, here are the six things in the report. And I suggest you head over to Y Charts and download a copy while you're listening to or watching this episode. So they put out some research on hedging against geopolitical risk, climate change risk, inflation risk, stock market crash risk, volatility, and a weakening dollar. So Connor, if it's all right with you, before we get started on the hedges that we're going to walk through, what, could you talk a little bit about what prompted Y charts to produce this white paper? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of things like inflation or volatility or that fear of a, of a significant market correction that has been really top of mind for a lot of investors recently. So we are constantly communicating with our advisors who use Y charts to understand what are those topics or those trends that your clients are watching and what are the questions that they're asking that maybe Y charts can help answer. So what we did here was we wanted to ask short of maybe some of the more complex or advanced hedging strategies that are out there using options or leverage or short selling, uh, what are some ways that advisors can really take action uh, about these uh, market-wide risk factors? And we made this assumption that if you're not already using options, if you're not already uh, short selling, or it's just not appropriate for your clients, then we don't think that you're gonna uh, start doing that overnight. So what's a practical and actionable way of uh, maybe acting on some of those client concerns? Perhaps it's just a, a small allocation to an ETF. And there's so many, like you mentioned, great thematic ETFs or really purpose-built ETFs out there uh, that just seem perfect for the job for things like fighting inflation or uh, accounting for a weakening U.S. dollar, which I know we'll get into the, the nuance there in a little bit. But um, we wanted to see, hey, what's a, what's a lightweight way of acting on these client concerns? Yeah, practical is the term I would use when I finish reading the white paper, because you can take action on this white paper if you do have those concerns. And of course, with the uh, ease of access to ETFs, it is something that can be very simple to add to your practice as an advisor. Uh, let, let's get started. So the sure. first hedge that I'd love to break down with you, because it seems to be top of mind, is the inflation hedge. I have some charts I'm going to show. So for podcast listeners, make sure you head over to the YouTube channel to look at some of these charts, or even better, download the white paper by visiting whitecharts.com. Walk us through how you constructed this inf potential inflation hedge. Yeah, so we looked at three historical periods in which inflation rose considerably. And the most recent one of those is over this past year, 2020 and 2021, where you know inflation is now above 7%, certainly top of mind for everyone. And so we started with a 60-40 equity and fixed income portfolio. That's the original portfolio in the top line of this table. And we looked at its max drawdown over the period. And we also looked at the average standard deviation throughout that time frame. And then with a 5, 10, and 15% allocation to these different ETFs, and also, you know, we couldn't leave Bitcoin out of the conversation here. Uh, so we wanted to see how they affected these risk metrics. And as you see, um, Bitcoin really did not 
help the portfolio in terms of drawdown and standard deviation. And really the best of the bunch here was that short-term treasury bond. Uh, you hear about commodities and you hear about treasury infl inflation protected securities tips, and um, they both did help, but not as much as that shy SHY ETF. Yep. So for podcast listeners, the three ETFs in this uh, graph are SHY, the iShares one to three year, uh, TIP, the iShares tips ETF, and then the Invesco uh, DB commodity tracking ETF that I know is very popular, symbol DBC. And so the net takeaway from this, looking at this particular time period, is that the short-term treasury ETF provided the best inflation hedge. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that surprises a lot of folks. If you download the white paper from whitecharts.com, you'll see that they went through this inflation hedge over different time periods as well. Connor, what are the other time periods that they can find in the report? For inflation, we also looked at time periods where uh, historically it was um, April 2015 to July 2018, and also October 2006 to July 2008. So leading right up to uh, the financial crisis, uh, inflation was certainly uh, uh, rising as a lot of other you know, indicators were moving pretty rapidly in that time frame as well. And, and I'm sorry, did... Did you find a different outcome in those different time periods? Was SHY still the best hedge? Uh, we did see that actually commodities, uh, the commodity ETF DBC did perform really well, especially in that period right before the 08 uh, crash. But um, you know, the most recent period that we looked at, as we said, uh, SHY, and then also um, Bitcoin, in terms of adding performance to the portfolio, did exceptionally well. Um, but the biggest surprise across all of the periods we looked at was that TIP or the TIPS ETF. Um, it says it right in the name, inflation protected, and it really did not seem to be moving the needle for the 60-40 portfolio. Yeah. It's been really painful for financial advisors when they have tried to allocate to TIPS expecting to find that hedge. Uh, and I know that White Charts isn't giving recommendations, but if you go and you read the report, you can see looking at those four different asset classes, there are different time periods where some presented a better hedge for you than others. Fascinating. Again, SHY, DBC, TIP, and Bitcoin as the potential hedges for inflation in this report. Connor, let's, uh, let's move on to the stock market crash work that you guys did. And so when you looked at different time periods uh, for a crash, you had, and I'm going to pull up on the screen for podcast listeners, the ETFs that they did their research on for this particular type of environment are the ProShare Short S&P 500, symbol SH, uh, the Spiders Gold ETF, GLD, and Cash. Tell me, what did your research find, Connor? Yeah, we found that this was actually a really prime target for hedging with ETFs. And just to frame uh, the research we did again, we moved in and out of these positions in our in our sample portfolio, really with perfect timing. So that is a caveat to note. Uh, as an advisor, you know, timing is is really everything when you're trying to get tactical, and that is something that uh, we gave as an assumption perfect timing on right before a market crash, moving into one of these ETFs or cash. And this one, uh, yeah, you can see from this table, limiting the drawdown, especially from that ProShares short ETF, uh, at a 15% hedge, you're saving about 15 points of drawdown on the portfolio. And that is hugely significant. Don't need to repeat that to any, you know, that's a significant protection, downside protection. But um, again, assuming that perfect timing, I think that you would, it, it makes a lot of sense that a short S&P 500 ETF perfectly inversely related to the S&P itself, and that's going to help uh, protect some port portfolio value. Yeah. So the best caveat actually to all of these examples is that they are based upon perfect timing and meant for illustrative purposes when you're looking at portfolio construction. But with that being said, looking at the 5% hedge to cash, it didn't really help you at all. 
And I think about how many advisors portfolios today will say, well, I'm just going to go raise a little bit more cash to help protect against a market crash. And even with that perfect timing, it still isn't providing the performance that you would like or the drawdown protection that you would like, given the cash drag you have when there isn't a market crash. Exactly. And that's just, you know, if there is a, a situation where let's say the mark you're expecting this pullback and it never happens, perhaps with something like the GLD ETF, you're not necessarily missing out on um, other performance or other benefits. Whereas with cash, you're just putting that on the sidelines. Just putting it on the sidelines, earning nothing. Yep. Yeah. All right. Next is the volatility hedge. So for the volatility hedge, we're using uh, SHY, the iShares one to three year treasury bond, the Invesco S&P 500 low volatility ETF symbol SPLV. And I want to break that one down with you. And then last cash. And then lastly, the iPath S&P 500 VIX futures ETF symbol VXX. Connor, let's walk through these. All right. So shy makes sense. We've already talked about that in another potential scenario. Why SPLV, the low volatility ETF? Yeah, this is just another example of those really purpose-built ETFs for, for this exact situation that we're describing. And what this ETF does is takes a more active approach to you know the S&P 500, tries to strip out names with historically more volatility. I can tell you that some of the top holdings here are Procter & Gamble, Pepsi, the Hershey Company, uh, Mondelez International. So a lot of fa fairly stable names, but still blue chip names nonetheless. And um, what you saw here is that in this uh, early 2020 through early 2021 period, a lot of those names, uh, what you would consider very stable uh, in stocks, did not provide that same protection. As you, we all maybe recall, 2020, 2021, throw the rule book out the window, really anything that you thought uh, would have been uh, well suited for that pullback was not the case. And all those different stay at home names kind of took center stage at that time. Well, before we move on from SPLV, when you looked at the other time periods in this white paper, did it have the same lack of uh, drawdown protection? Uh, it actually did not, you know, so across the uh, the previous period, which was, if you remember some pullback in 2018 and 2019, SPLV did about uh, about par with the portfolio itself. So it really didn't have an adverse effect. Um, but then going back to 2011 and 2012, another period we tested for uh, this uh, volatility, we saw that it did marginally improve the max drawdown, but it actually marginally worsened the standard deviation on the portfolio. Hmm. That's why you have to test it over multiple time periods. Um, and, and I don't know that the challenging markets of 2020 and 2021 are the best example for all of this because those were very interesting times. Uh, so cash as a volatility hedge makes sense. Tell us about the addition of VIX into this research report. Yeah, absolutely. So we all know that the VIX or the, the fear index is going to spike whenever volatility is uh, knocking on our door. And this VXX, it's a relatively new uh, product, and it is also a little more convoluted in, in kind of the, the futures that it's holding within the ETF. However, um, this is set up to really uh, benefit whenever volatility does spike. It's almost, I believe it is inversely related to the VIX perfectly. So if you see that VIX starting to creep up and you think it's going to continue to spike higher, um, this VXX uh, should do the same thing like we saw uh, SHY did, um, where it's exact inverse of that volatility spiking. Yeah, uh, those, those were very interesting selections for the hedge. And it looks like that in different time periods, some of them work and some don't. And that's the beauty of this research. I encourage you to head over to whitecharts.com and download the full report. And you can see how the different volatility hedges work during different time periods. Connor, let's wrap up with a weakening dollar hedge. And as you think about a weakening dollar and contrasting it with inflation, how did you approach those two different types of hedges for this research report? 
Yeah, so when we looked at hedging inflation, we were looking at the US inflation rate. And then, and that was kind of our indicator of, okay, when inflation uh, starts to spike or when it finds a bottom and then starts to rise steadily, those were the periods we examined. Here with the weakening US dollar, we were looking at uh, the US ICE dollar index. So this tracks the US dollar against six uh, international currencies like the Euro or the Swiss franc, uh, Japanese yen. And so, again, this is a similar concept where we see the U.S. dollar is becoming less valuable or the purchasing power is uh, diminishing over time, but really just taking a cue from a different indicator here. All right. So the securities, the ETFs that you're using for this analysis are VEA, the Vanguard FTSE Developed Markets ETF. The Invesco Deutsche Bank U.S. dollar bearish ETF, symbol UDN, and then Bitcoin again. Walk us through those selections. Yeah, so the I, I would say what is commonly the most direct way for uh, hedging weakness in U.S. stocks or you know the profits that U.S. companies are generating is to look at foreign equities. So that is the reason for VEA here. Uh, we also found this dollar bearish UDN ETF uh, to be particularly interesting. And then Bitcoin, again, we had this uh, kind of more of a, a fun experiment here thinking about, okay, if Bitcoin is a decentralized currency and it's not tied to any specific country, then would it provide some benefit in these moments when um, perhaps other international currencies are not, uh, not so strong? All right. So what did you find for this particular time period looking at 2020 to 2021? Uh, this was one of the areas, uh, one of the risk factors we tested that was not as easy to hedge against using ETFs based on these three periods, based again on that perfect entry and exit timing of the hedges. So you'll see that, uh, you know, looking at the performance for these uh, hedges is is an interesting uh juxtaposition because the Bitcoin allocation significantly worse in the portfolio drawdown. A 15% a hedge doubled that drawdown from 4.6% to worse than 11%. And this is, uh, you know, over a, a little over a year. And conversely, if you look at the performance for those Bitcoin positions, you're, you're kind of catching Bitcoin at a great time, uh, but you're not actually uh, feeling the purpose of the hedge, which is to protect your portfolio value. Um, and then across the board, really not any positive impact in this period of, of 2020 through 2021 for any of these ETFs. Yeah. I, was it hard to find some securities to use for this, given the, the results you have for this particular time period? Yes, it was. I think that, um, again, we, we were comparing this to, um, it was a different way of looking at that inflation or the the weakening dollar. And so we wanted to test a few different securities here. And um, I, I would say the, the difficulty we had searching them, finding them is reflected in the difficulty of actually implementing a hedge for this. Right. And, and that's the financial advisor's dilemma when building portfolios to hedge these things out. So advisors, please visit whitecharts.com, download a copy of this robust 68 page report they also walk through how you can hedge geopolitical risks over multiple time periods and examples of hedging climate change over multiple periods so connor this is your second time on the show breaking down some great research from y charts i'm a big fan in fact i could be called a fanboy of y charts i appreciate everything you guys are doing and thanks so much for coming back on the show Thank you, Jay. It was really exciting to be here again. And yeah, keep visiting YCharts.com. We love answering these questions that advisors hear very often. Head to our resources page and check out our full library of white papers there.